Welcome to the Intersection of Faith and the Culture. It's Wall Builders Live, always taking on the hot topics of the day from a biblical, historical, and constitutional perspective. And now, right now, is a very important time to be doing that. We're less than a month out from, I know we say it every time, the most important election of our lifetime. But frankly, every election is the most important election of our lifetime since the last one. So it's actually true. But this one, folks, this one, I mean, this literally is going to determine the trajectory of the country in some huge ways. I mean, we are slouching towards Gomorrah, as Robert Bork said in his uh, book title years ago. uh, The culture is crumbling around us. We have to. We have to pick up the pieces and start rebuilding liberty. Now, we've got to rebuild the walls. That's what Wall Builders is all about, rebuilding the foundations. You know, that scripture in Nehemiah says, arise and rebuild the walls that we may no longer be a reproach. When David started Wall Builders 30 years ago, I I don't know if he could have possibly imagined the importance that it would play right now, right now, for such a time as this. And and I'm all over the country, and I'm meeting with people all the time talking about how the wall builders' materials have gotten them involved for the first time in their lives. They took one of our Constitution classes, or they heard David on a radio program, or they saw Tim speak in their neighborhood, or or whatever it was. And now they're engaged. I'm telling you, it's having a huge impact. So you, by being a listener of Wall Builders and hopefully sharing the program, you know, be a force multiplier, take those links and send them to your friends and family. You, by being a donor to Wall Builders Live. So if you haven't ever done that, go to wallbuilderslive.com today. Make that one time or monthly contribution. When you do those things, you're a part of all of those ripple effects that Wall Builders is having all over the nation and, frankly, around the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of the solution. And uh, I forgot to say, my name's Rick Green. I'm a former Texas legislator and America's Constitution coach. Always glad to be here with you and in such an honor to be with these two guys, David and Tim Barton. Tim Barton, national speaker and pastor. He's president of Wall Builders. You can book him in to speak in your community as you should. I highly recommend it. And uh, and David Barton, America's premier historian. He's our founder at Wall Builders. And he and Cheryl started Wall Builders, as I said, 30 years ago. Uh, and the impact is just off the charts. And if you haven't had a uh, chance to meet David and Cheryl, get them to come in and speak at your church. Uh, have an opportunity to to meet them on one of these uh, American Restoration Tour events. They're happening all over the nation. In fact, we'll be uh, you know catching up with David on the road today, so he'll be calling in to be a part of the program as he continues to hit city after city. Um, they've just got an insane schedule, and it's a really impressive what they've been able to do. All right, David and Tim, we got Dr. Everett Piper back with us, and uh, man, he's got some local crazy stuff going on in Oklahoma of all places. And, and Tim, I think one of the things people are going to realize today, if they don't already realize it, the crazy stuff in America is not just happening in super blue areas. Uh, they the, the left is uh, trying to gain ground even in red areas with some of these things like the crazy drag queen shows. Uh, and that's what uh, one of the things that um, Dr. Piper is going to be talking to us about. But I just think a take home message for today is going to be, hey, everybody needs to be aware. Everybody needs to be engaged. Don't think just because you live in the buckle of the Bible belt that your area is safe. 100 percent correct. And unfortunately, one of the things that we are seeing is a lot of these rural areas that tend to be very conservative, they're the ones being targeted almost because, you know, if you've grown up in one of these smaller towns or country towns or very conservative towns, you just kind of take for granted that, man, things are fine. It's not a big deal, right? We're, we don't live in a crazy place. The crazy places are the big cities where Democrats or liberals control those cities and they have terrible policies. Those are the crazy places. But what we're seeing is, that, that really the left, and in some cases, right, it's, it's, it's more demonic than just saying it's a political side. I mean, there's some, some evil in this. And the devil, right, strategically, he wants all of the world. He doesn't just want the big cities. He wants all the people everywhere. He wants to, to damage families and kids anywhere he can get them. And so it totally makes sense that every, everywhere in the U.S. is a target. There's crazy people in every single place. Now, it's like in conservative states, they're more outnumbered, and so you don't necessarily notice them because you think of an Alabama as being conservative or Oklahoma being conservative or Arkansas or or Wyoming or whatever, and so you don't notice them. But what I'm finding out is when it starts coming to the local level, they're already there. And if, if conservative people, particularly Christians, refuse to get involved in local areas, even though you might have a local town that's very conservative, and maybe when they vote, they're 85% conservative, that 15% is there, and if you don't vote in school board elections, if you don't vote in smaller stuff, they're going to be the ones running it. And so what I'm finding is even in the very, very conservative towns and cities, because the conservatives are not getting involved in local elections, 
the goofy people are running the things there. And it looks like, you know, all over the nation, we're seeing schools indoctrinated with crazy stuff and, and library stuff and, and, you know, gender stuff that we would never expect from that city or that town or that state. But that's a reflection of the fact that those people have not been involved at local levels. I, I think an additional challenge, and I totally agree with what you're saying. I think an additional challenge is that the left has done such a good job of controlling the narrative of what is legal and, and what is tolerance. And, you know, to say that, wait a second, you know, if we're going to, for example, if we're going to have, you know, some kind of drag show, you know, transgender drag show, whatever the case might be, then then you can't tell us no because it's a First Amendment right and how dare you not be tolerant, et cetera, et cetera. And so sometimes you have people who maybe are, are very good hearted people who are buying into an incorrect narrative about what tolerance and the law actually looks like as if suggesting that anything anybody wants to do, you have to tolerate and it should be legal. Well, that's not the way law works and that's actually not the way tolerance works either. We have to not buy into this narrative of the, the fact that we're supposed to tolerate whatever kind of bad behavior comes because frankly, there are some things that we're not supposed to tolerate. One of the, the, the I think, major misconceptions even in Christianity that we're supposed to love everybody and everything. Well, the Bible actually tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you look up the word hate in the Bible, it is shocking, at least it probably would be to most people, how often the word hate is describing God's feelings or response towards sin and evil. God hates sin and evil. It is all over the Bible. And literally the Bible actually tells us that the fear of the Lord, if we have the fear of the Lord, we're supposed to hate the things that God hates. And this is also something where if we start getting into some of what we're seeing now in culture, and especially some of these smaller towns where they are promoting some of these transgender drag shows, you know, Jesus said it would be better for someone to have a millstone tied around their neck and thrown into the sea where Jesus is literally saying, it's better for you to die, for you to be drowned than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And yet what we are seeing now is that some of these literally, for example, transgender drag shows are happening in public places. Kids are being invited. They're, they're being told it's family friendly as they're promoting all kinds of sexual immorality, things that are an abomination before the Lord, the things that we know the Bible tells us that sexual sin is a unique sin because it's a sin that's against our own body. And this is something that is literally against the public decency laws in nearly every single town, every single community. And yet you have in many cases in some of these conservative towns, you have conservative leaders who are afraid to uphold the law and say no. And if Christians don't stand up and speak out, this nonsense can be rampant merely because we did nothing. And, and right, there's that famous quote that's attributed to a couple of different people, but the adage that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. If people sit down and don't get involved, if we don't stand up and push back and say no to sin, no to wickedness, no to evil, it will become more and more rampant in this nation. And by the way, Tim, you mentioned that, that hate really is a part of biblical faith because you have to hate the wrong things. You, you have to hate any time evil occurs. And it's they, they use that against us as if they're not haters. And if you want to see some hate, just tell them what they're doing is wrong. Just intervene and try to say, hey, it's inappropriate to have a, a family-friendly drag show. We're, we're not going to do that. You'll see the hate come out at that point. So it's always been interesting to me that those that accuse the other side of something, that's generally what they do more of themselves. Um, that goes back to a verse in Romans 2. But you really have this thing that, you know, they, they want to make us look like haters because we think things are wrong. Man, do they hate us when we point out what's wrong. So that's something we should never let affect us is what they call us, what names they use, you know, how they want to describe us. They're generally describing themselves and transferring that onto the others. So we got to stand for what's right. And, and Tim, you're right. The Bible is full of what God says he hates. And there are certain things that we need to, you know, that's one of the verses in the Bible too, that David talked about, I hate what he hates. And we've got to get to the point where we see that as wrong because what he hates is the things that will destroy a community, they will destroy a family, they will destroy individuals, and you're actually loving someone by trying to oppose the things that will destroy them, whether they know it will destroy them or not. And that's really what we have to do in situations like this. And you know, one of the places that we're seeing this kind of goofy stuff is in Oklahoma, which is a very red, very conservative state. And in a conservative part of Oklahoma, up in the Bartlesville area, north of Tulsa, really conservative. They're actually having in Bartlesville there in the city, this family-friendly drag show. And that's probably the last place in America you would pick for that. 
And so up in Bartlesville is where Everett Piper is. He was the president of Oklahoma Westland for a number of years. And he's watched what's going on in this little conservative town. He's actually running for a county commissioner there. There's actually three people that, that are in charge of running the county. And he's running for one of those slots because it's just gotten crazy. And this is the thing that when conservative people don't get engaged, the people who get office are going to do crazy things. And so, you know, kudos to Everett for getting engaged. But this is something that's an issue to him. And it's interesting to talk about why it's happening in such a conservative community, because this is what we see all over the nation right now. Yeah. And in fact, Washington Times has a a great article uh, by Dr. Piper specifically about this. But we thought it'd be great to get him on the radio program to talk about it. And and as we you know said earlier, make sure people know this can happen in your community, probably is happening, unfortunately, in your community. Even if you think you're in a super red area, it's going on all over the nation and it can be stopped, but it's going to take some courage. And that's exactly what Dr. Piper is going to talk about. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back on Wobblers Live. Hey guys, we want to let you know about a new resource we have at Wall Builders called The American Story. For so many years, people have asked us to do a history book to help tell more of the story that's just not known or not told today. And we would say very providentially, in the midst of all of the new attacks coming out against America, whether it be from things like the 1619 Project that say America is evil and everything in America was built off slavery, which is certainly not true, or things like even the Black Lives Matter movement, the organization itself, not not the statement Black Lives Matter, but the organization that says, we're against everything that America was built on and this is part of the Marxist ideology there's so many things attacking America well is America worth defending what is a true story of America we actually have written and told that story starting with Christopher Columbus going roughly through Abraham Lincoln we tell the story of America not as the story of a perfect nation or a perfect people but the story of how God used these imperfect people and did great things through this nation it's a story you want to check out wallbuilders.com the American story This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. In Exodus 18.21, the Bible not only instructs that we're to choose our own leaders at the local and county and state and federal levels, but it also sets forth the standards for those leaders. For generations, Americans voted with a full awareness of this passage. Notice, for example, how founding father Noah Webster relied on it. He instructed students, when you become entitled to exercise the right of voting for public officers, let it be impressed on your mind that God commands you to choose for rulers just men who will rule in the fear of God. If our government fails to secure public prosperity and happiness, it must be because the citizens neglect this scripture and elect bad men to make and administer the laws. In the upcoming elections, make sure not only that you vote, but that you vote for leaders who will rule in the fear of God. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back to Wall Builders Live. Thanks for staying with us today. Always good to have Dr. Everett Piper with us. Check out his book, Not a Daycare, The Devastating Consequences of Abandoning Truth, and a new article specifically about these quote-unquote family-friendly drag queen shows and uh, one that came to his home state of Oklahoma. Dr. Piper, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for coming on. Oh, Rick, I'm always, uh, I always have a blast on your show, so thanks for having me on again. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, unfortunately, too often our topic is just insane and feels like we've gotten in some kind of time machine and gone to some other place or, uh, I don't know, these drag queen shows, I just don't get it. I can't believe parents are taking their kids to these things. And then, as you point out in the article, um, sometimes politicians embracing this stuff. Uh, I In Oklahoma, I expect it in other places, but Oklahoma? Well, not only in Oklahoma, but in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And you know, that's where Oklahoma Wesleyan University is, where I served as president for 17 years. And I want to remind everybody that's listening right now, Oklahoma is uh, the reddest of red states, or at least that's what we boast. We haven't had one county vote blue in five successive presidential elections. Not one county. It's a sea of red. And Bartlesville, Oklahoma, is supposedly the conservative bastion in northeast Oklahoma, where everybody's a Republican. But yet, here in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, on September 10th, they had a family-friendly drag queen performance in a public park. I want to emphasize the word public. They promoted this family-friendly drag queen performance in a public park. They put posters up in a local high school They lit up the the buildings around the park in rainbow colors. They had bouncy toys, and they actually were teaching children 
And when I say children, I'm not talking 15-year-olds. I'm talking 5-year-olds, 6-year-olds, and 8-year-olds. We have photographs of this. They were teaching children how to give money, dollar bills, to these quote-unquote performers who were mimicking a strip act or a strip routine that you would see um, in a movie that was portraying an adult club. So you have these adult men who get their kicks out of dressing up in size 14 pumps, knee-high boots, fishnet stockings, a mini skirt with a big blonde wig as they blackface mock and mimic and make fun of women. And we're teaching our children in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, to give these guys dollar bills as a thank you for their performance in a public park. And we had, now here's the good news. The good news on this story, Rick, is that a bunch of millennial parents started a petition saying this is wrong. If you want to do this stuff, take it behind closed doors. Stop doing it in our public parks. And over 2,200 people signed this petition saying, stop this. This is wrong. That's the good news. Now, the challenging news is we have a conservative Republican city council that has refused to take any action thus far, even though we have city ordinances that have been on the books for decades against lewd and lasciviousness behavior. Their language, not mine. That's what we say in our local law, our local statutes. You can't do this kind of stuff in public. But yet our city council seems to be stymied right now, wondering what they should do. And my point in my article, as you know, is this. Do your job. We elected you to enforce the local laws. So enforce these laws. This isn't confusing. A bunch of dudes prancing and preening to Shania Twain's I Feel Like a Woman, which they were doing. A bunch of guys prancing and preening and, and, and grinding in front of kids in the local public park where your kid could be riding his bicycle through on his way to visit a neighbor. That's wrong, and it should stop. And hopefully we're going to stop it here in Bartlesville. But it took place. We just need to encourage our city council to grow a spine. Well, you make a huge point in your in your podcast about we always you know talk about at the federal level, presidency, that sort of thing, and making a difference. But it's the local offices right here that you can make the most difference with. And the fact that you've got local elected officials in, in this conservative town unwilling to enforce the law and, and literally, I mean, supporting this by not going against it. I mean, your silence is their silence is is definitely speaking volumes. Uh, people can make a difference at the local level. they got to pay attention to who gets elected, a mayor and city council and commissioner in all these local offices. Absolutely. And what makes this even more pertinent is obviously we're in the midterm elections here. We have, we have a couple city council positions on the ballot on November 8th. And one of the guys running for city council, and he could win here in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, conservative corner of the conservative rightest of red states, is a guy that was at this event with his pride t-shirts on. He's employed by Conoco Phillips and Phillips 66, who sponsored this event. They gave money to it. I guess, I guess Phillips 66 and uh, St. Carmen Insurance and Trudy Credit Union and others think the most important thing for small little conservative towns like Bartlesville, Oklahoma, is to have a family-friendly drag queen performance. This is outrageous. Unreal. And I hope that this has awakened the local electorate to vote against this guy that's running for city council who will just double down and continue to try to ram this kind of garbage down the throats of conservative heartland America. Well, call me uh, call me a prude, but I mean, it seems like there was a time if you if you took a kid that's five or six years old into a strip club, uh, you would you would get in some trouble. That's uh, that that would be child abuse. Um, but it's okay to take them to the local park, where you've got uh, you know drag queens doing essentially strip. I mean, they're doing all of the these you know I can't even describe it on our program things that they're they, things that they're doing in front of these kids, and and there's not there's not a problem with. I mean, it seems like to me that's child abuse. Well, here's the parallel, and I've asked this question of the local officials. Let's assume that I'm a, a, a 25-year-old dad, uh, I've got young kids, I'm going to town. I, I, I'm a farmer. I'm 10, 15 miles out of Bartlesville, and I go into town on a Saturday to buy groceries and at Walmart. And we do, and it's a beautiful day, so afterwards we stop at Wendy's to get a burger and fries for our kids, and we stop at the local public park to let our kids have a picnic and watch the ducks. And let's assume as we're doing that, sitting at a picnic table, some dude, 6'3", dude, 220 pounds, in knee-high leather boots, fishnet stockings, a thong with a big exaggerated wig, comes prancing and preening by our kids there at the public park with a 
ghetto blaster on his shoulder playing Shania Twain's I Feel Like a Woman. They were playing that song. Let's assume that happens while we're at that park. Do you think maybe the police should intervene and stop that? Right. Do you think maybe the local authorities should say that's wrong? I would hope so. There's no difference between this uh, this big event that took place in a public park and some dude doing that uh, individually. I have to say the good news here, as you said, already already said, but I want to emphasize it. You know, 2,200 signatures. These were young parents that started the petition to, to try to stop this. I'm assuming in a... I don't know how big Bartlesville is, but that seems like a large number of people um, in any community to, to sign on to this and say no. So it seems like the the majority of people are with us. I mean, we haven't totally lost our mind, right? I mean, there's a few crazies out there that think this is okay, but are we still the majority on even an issue that seems so obvious as this? I think we are the majority because Bartlesville is a little less than 40,000 people, small little town, 40,000 people, and you had 2,200 sign a petition spontaneously to stop this. And it wasn't just a bunch of old gray-haired folks. It was young millennial parents who signed it, too. In fact, they're the ones that initiated it. So I'd like to think that if you can get that many people in a small town to say no, no. And and frankly, some of these people are probably more libertarian in their view because they would say, hey, if these guys want to do this, if they get their kicks out of doing this, then uh, have at it. But just do it behind closed doors. Stop doing it in public places on our streets our sidewalks and our local parks and and somehow i, I don't even know what the the right legislation would be for this but somehow there, you got to outlaw taking kids to this stuff there's got to be some definition of you know obscenity that allows you to say this is not okay for kids in even in a free society parents aren't allowed to uh, you know take their child and sexualize them in this way i i'm just shocked that this isn't already against the law Well, it's clearly grooming, okay? These guys are grooming these young children to find this acceptable and to show curiosity and to give these guys an entree into their lives. Mm. And we've got stories across the nation of these guys actually participating in child abuse after they've groomed these kids accordingly. And I agree with you. Parents should be confronted. Parents should at least be challenged in the public square to stop doing this to their children, if not arrested for doing so. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, folks, you can hear Everett Piper on a regular basis with his podcast, The Rebellion, on podcast apps all over the place. Uh, Dr. Everett Piper, God bless you, brother. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you being a part of Wall Builders Live. That's Dr. Everett Piper, folks. Stay with us. We'll be right back with David and Tim Barton. Hey, friends, if you've been listening to Wall Builders Live for very long at all, you know how much we respect our veterans and how appreciative we are of the sacrifice they make to make our freedoms possible. One of the ways that we love to honor those veterans is to tell their stories here on Wall Builders Live. Once in a while, we get an opportunity to interview veterans that have served on those front lines that have made incredible sacrifices have amazing stories that we want to share with the american people one of the very special things we get to do is interview world war ii veterans you've heard those interviews here on wall builders live from folks that were in the band of brothers to folks like edgar harrell that survived the indianapolis to so many other great stories you've heard on wall builders live you have friends and family that also serve If you have World War II veterans in your family that you would like to have their story shared here on Wall Builders Live, please email us at radio at wallbuilders.com, radio at wallbuilders.com. Give us a brief summary of the story, and we'll set up an interview. Thanks so much for sharing here on Wall Builders Live. We're back here on Wall Builders Live. Thanks for staying with us. Thanks to Dr. Everett Piper. Always good to have him on the program. Back with uh, David Barton. Of course, David's on the road doing this incredible American Restoration Tour with Chad Conley and Faith Winds. We had Chad on yesterday uh, to talk about all that. But, David, uh, thanks for taking some time between uh, – it seems like you're doing 50 events a day. I know it's not that many, but it seems like it's 50 events a day. I know it's maybe three or four. But, uh, anyway, uh, covering a lot of ground. And it's and it's actually helping with these situations Dr. Piper's talking about because you're hitting both red and blue cities and telling everybody in the country, churches all over the nation, pastors all over the nation to get involved. Can we safely say that most people think California is probably blue? I mean, I, I think that's where. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know, say so. <laughs> but there are. I was in a church Sunday morning, in California, and pastor actually brought up uh, this family-friendly drag show stuff in California, and he just was straight out, just straight said, "Look, this is child abuse. When you do this, this is child abuse." Uh, see, that's the kind of backbone and courage you need. You need people calling out what it is 
because if you remain silent, then people start thinking, well, this is mainstream. I must be out of whack because I don't think this is mainstream. And you've got to have leaders talking like that. So that's one of the cool things we are seeing on the road and in these various states and churches, even a place like where most of America wouldn't expect to hear a line like that coming out of California is starting to happen to these churches. And so it's great to see Christian leaders like Everett Piper step up and say, hey, not in Bartlesville, you don't. That That is not going to happen. And you heard how exercised he was over this. I mean, he he, he really, this is, this is something he's not going to tolerate. And that's really good. Um, you don't want to be tolerant of what you should be intolerant over. And that's part of where America has gotten in such a bad position right now. We've tolerated things that are destroying the nation, destroying the morals, destroying the family, et cetera. And there has to be a point in time in which you start becoming intolerant, even if they call you a hater. And I think this year, last I knew, um, the right wing watch has me as the number two hater in America. I think Glenn Beck is number three. So I beat Glenn Beck in something that he, he is less of a hater than I am, apparently. <laughs> but nonetheless, you just got to take the shots and say, hey, who cares? I don't answer to you. I answer to God. And by the way, I think it might help the nation five, 10 years from now if we can get people thinking right. And, and so it's just good to see people starting to stand up from California to Oklahoma, from red to blue. We're starting to get voices saying the right things. All right, folks, out of time. Thanks for joining us today on Wobblers Live. As always, lots of good stuff on our website at wobblerslive.com. We always cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. So even as we talk about some of these bad and ugly things out there, like these drag shows and other uh, things happening both in red and blue areas, we also want to emphasize the good, and that is that you can stop these things. You can be the catalyst for restoring biblical and constitutional principles in your community. In fact, I challenge you to become a Constitution coach and start leading the way to restoring this constitutional republic. All that information available at wobbleterslive.com. We sure appreciate you listening to Wobbleters Live. We stand undivided forever. Again.